How would you describe your leadership style? Uh, well, first of all, Molly, um, I believe a, a great deal in being a very positive leader. Uh, I've read a lot of books on leadership, John C. Maxwell and, and so many others. And here's the way I would describe the role of a leader. A leader must create a crystal clear vision of what he or she wants the team to accomplish. Then the leader has to have the ability to motivate and inspire and then empower the members of the team to reach far beyond what they are capable of doing. He has to be able to identify roles and to help them uh, execute those roles. And everybody's got a role. Everybody is equal in the task. Everybody has to work together. You're not dependent or independent. You're interdependent on the members of your team. And the leader has to lead in that direction. He's got to set the example. And he's, he's got to be true to his word. What's your approach to goal setting, both with the guys themselves, individual goals, as well as team goals? How do you well, approach it? The first thing I do is I meet with all the players individually before the season, and they all have individual goals they want to accomplish. But as I explain to them, our team goals have to supersede your individual goals. Your individual goals have to be things that help our team be successful. How, how do your guys hold each other accountable and how do you hold your guys accountable relevant to their goals? What does that look like? Well, first of all, we have a very simple uh, definition of discipline. We think self-discipline is hugely important. We're always emphasizing to our guys to be accountable, not only to themselves, but to the team, to the program. Our simple definition uh, of, of discipline is this. Do what you're supposed to do, do it when you're supposed to do it, and do it to the best of your ability every single day. And so we try to hold each other accountable to that level of discipline. We try to be very organized in our practices. Our players have to, to look at the practice plan. They don't have to study it. They've got to kind of know what the plan of attack is for that day. And uh, in the seven habits of highly effective people, Dr. Stephen Covey, uh, his first habit is be proactive. By that, we mean plan ahead. You have to have a plan. So we have a plan every day in practice. Our players need to know what that plan is. They need to buy into that plan and then execute that plan, just like they have to execute a game plan. And the players are going to be accountable to uh, each other. We have Great leadership in our senior class. We have five seniors this year, and they set the example. And then if anyone is not behaving in a first-class manner, they're going to let them know. And my coaches are going to let them know. And we, we do not punish. I don't use the expression, hey, we're going to punish that, that person for, for violating a team rule. We say we're going to give him a reminder. We're going to remind him that that kind of behavior is unacceptable. It might be something as simple as not getting back on defense, of complaining to a referee, you know, who's one of our managers and, and, and didn't make a call that you thought you got fouled on. Simple things like that. We, we will give a player a reminder. He'll have to do a 10 second sprint or 10 push ups. If a guy misses an uncontested layup, there's a reminder that we don't miss uncontested layups. And so the discipline has to be there. It has to be consistent. And the players have to remind each other that they have to execute every single day. When I became a coach, I started to realize I could do it as a coach. And I start visualizing the game in my head before we ever play the game. How is the opponent going to play defense on us? Are they going to switch ball screens or trap ball screens? Are they going to front the post? Are they going to deny wing passes? And as I would visualize that, I would share it with the team and let them know the mental side of the game is so important. We say mental is the physical as four is to one. Four times more important that you are mentally engaged and understand so you can execute. If you're not making good decisions because you don't know what the opponent is doing, 
then, then you're going to lose that game. You have to be very well prepared. So I always encourage my, my players to visualize. What, what keeps you motivated, Coach? What keeps you motivated year after year? Yeah, Molly, I love coaching. Uh, I started coaching in the ninth grade. Hmm. My high school coach, Jack Kern at Archbishop Malloy High School, called me into the office right after Christmas. We were 7-0, and the freshman team. But our coach quit. He left the Marist order and started a new life. So we didn't have a coach. So Coach Kern called me in. He always called me Larry. He said, Larry, you're going to have to coach the freshman team through the remainder of the season. And I did, along with a, a teammate of mine, Dick Zeitler. And uh, we coached the team to an undefeated season. We went 21-0, and won the city championship. And once I had that bug, that was it. I... I my intentions were to be a high school coach, just like Coach Curran. But Terry Holland at Davidson College offered me an assistant coaching job when I was 21 years old. I started my college coaching career in Davidson at 21. I've been doing it for 51 years and absolutely loving it. Awesome. I love being around my young players. As old as I am, I don't feel old. Mm -hmm. My brain doesn't think I'm old. My body, on the other hand, doesn't work like it used to. But I enjoy practices. I enjoy working with players. I enjoy working with a guy who wants to develop his game, improve his dribble moves, and improve his free throw. Molly, I had one of my players challenge me to a free throw contest. I said, well, I need a warm-up. Mm -hmm. He said, okay, you warm up. I'll wait. I made 39 in a row, and he, and he said, hey, coach, I forget the challenge. <laughs> I bet he did. What's your best piece of leadership advice that maybe you received or you'd give to someone else? I tell every young coach who plays for me and every manager, a grad assistant, anybody who's around me, you know, the old saying, it's not what you know, but who you know. I would tell them, make friends with everybody. Have the largest network of people that you can reach out to because you're always going to need help. I do not hesitate to reach out to people to help me in my program, mm -hmm. whether it's a Dr. Bob Rotella or a former assistant like Eric Conkle, who's now the head coach at Tulsa, or anybody in the business world who I've gotten to know, politicians who I've gotten to know. But I think the most important thing, I have right around 5,000 contacts in my phone. So whether it's an NBA coach or general manager or assistant or scout, I pretty much know who I want to reach out to when I need help with something. Mm -hmm.